As of late, the most frequent request I get for videos is videos on jaw harp repair. Now, where do we start with jaw harp repair? The first place I'd like to talk about is the ability to make your own tools for jaw harp repair because as of the time that I'm airing this video, there are no commercially available specialized tools for working on jaw harps. That may change in the future as popularity of jaw harp goes up, but we're going to talk about converting a regular set of pliers to a smooth jawed set of pliers. Now I made my own smooth jaw. I took a regular set of pliers that I found and made them smooth for holding onto triggers to working with triggers because when I'm working with a jaw harp trigger, I don't want a regular set of pliers that has these rough grippy abrasions on here. These are made for gripping metal well, but using them on a jaw harp reed, I don't want to cut or scrape or scratch them. So we're gonna talk about the process of taking those right off. Now you can think about, oh, well I can just file a set of pliers. Listen to the sound the file makes on there. A file removes metal by cutting the metal. It actually cuts small pieces of the metal off. A uh, regular set of pliers are gonna come, they're hardened and tempered. So the file itself, listen to it, it doesn't really cut into the metal. It just scrapes or skates across there. What we're going to do is we're going to anneal the metal. We're going to take the metal from a hardened state. We're gonna heat it up to a critical temperature where it glows orange and then just let it cool down to ambient. And then we're going to be able to work them either with a file or on a stone and get rid of these this texturing so that we can handle our jaw harp reed. Let's go ahead and get annealing. Now, a couple things I wanna talk about is when you're out in the shop, you've only got one body, so you really want to take care of it. We're going to wanna wear safety glasses, and later on in the process when we're removing metal, you might want to wear a respirator or dust mask, and if you're working with power tools, protect your hearing, so you only got one body, make sure you take care of it. For our annealing process, we're going to have a way that we're gonna hold the pliers, and then we're gonna heat them up. This is just a map gas torch. Uh, this is a turbo torch. You can use either propane or map gas. The map gas itself in the yellow container will get hotter. Keep in mind when you're working with open flames, if you're out in your garage, make sure there's no gas, no mineral spirits, no flammable liquids of any type anywhere near you. So let's go ahead and let's get going with that. Okay, we are here. We're with our map gas torch. I'm wearing my safety glasses and I have my pair of pliers. These are a crescent plier, um, commonly referred to as a CT. All the old farmers used to use these. I carry a pair of eight inch CTs on my hip every single day for work. I like them because they're really super tough. They're a good slip joint and you can beat on them. You can, they can get rusted up and clean them right off. They're gonna work really well. So I'm gonna grip one set of pliers and another set of pliers. So these are gonna get hot. We're gonna be doing what's called annealing. We're gonna heat it up until it glows orange and then we're gonna let it cool down to ambient. So we're just going to let it cool down by itself. We're not gonna quench it. Quenching will harden it. We wanna draw the, the hardness out of there. So first thing, make sure there's nothing flammable around you. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up the top of my map gas torch here. You hear the gas coming out. I'm gonna light it from down below. There we go, and we're gonna crank this. Uh, you can see that nice blue flame. We're gonna get everything flammable away from that. We're gonna start heating up our pliers. Now I can hold these pliers with another set of pliers. And we're just gonna heat them up so they glow warm. If you're working with flames like this, make sure you have a fire extinguisher or something near you. Just gonna heat these up nice and hot. Go back and forth. We'll start to see a golden straw color, then purple, then blue, then we'll get to our orange. Oh, this purple's coming. Yeah, I see. That's turning a beautiful purpley color. But we're going to go quite a bit hotter than that. That color you're seeing is an oxidation that occurs on the outside of the metal. I don't know if you can hear me over this flame. It's probably pretty loud in the mic. And I'm only going to be heating the part that I'm trying to anneal. There we go. We're starting to turn orange. See that? I keep going back and forth. I 
and I'm holding it with pliers, so I don't want to burn myself. Not today. I'm going to take that hardness right out. There we go. There's my orange color. I believe it's called critical temperature. I'm going to go ahead and heat these up too because I'll probably take these teeth off as well. Heating this tooth area up. Careful not to touch it. Let me get those middle teeth heated up. Make sure I'm not directing too much heat at my camera. That would be a bummer. Here are those are glowing orange. Get the other side of those. There we go. Those are glowing nice and orange. Look at this other side here too. Look at these. All these jaws are yield. It's really working for with reeds. We don't need that hard, extra hardness. The reed can be a little bit harder than our steel. So if the camera's picking that up, we're glowing orange, so we're going to shut off our torch. Doing this one-handed while I hold these pliers as well. Now we're going to set these on concrete or someplace where it can cool nicely. Yeah, I have this nice fire brick here where I can set these down. We're going to give them 15 to 30 minutes to cool before we touch that. The entire handle, all the pliers is very hot. Now what we should result in once it cools down to ambient, which is ambient our surrounding air temperature, is this metal should be annealed. We should be able to file it, work it into any shape that we want. Now in the meantime, while these pliers are cooling off, let's just go ahead. I'm going to do the same thing with a set of needle nose because on harps I want to be able to hold them with a smooth jawed pair of pliers and I also want to be able to hold the reed with a with a pair of needle nose. So I have a pair of needle nose. These were second hand. I think these were given to me. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kneel those jaws as well. We'll fire our torch back up. Crank it up nicely. I'm just going to kneel these jaws. These shouldn't take as long to heat up because they are a lot thinner than the thick jaws of the six inch CTs. There we go, got one side starting to heat up orange. See that? Good. There we go, we'll get the other side now. At some point if they get too hot to hold, have yourself a pair of pliers handy to hold the handles. As of right now, the heat hasn't migrated down to where I'm holding it yet. And my handles are starting to get a little hot, so switch over to holding with the pliers. There we go. I'd say that's that enough for our intent. Let's go ahead and let's let these pliers rest. We'll let them cool down because they're still quite hot, hot enough we don't want to touch. One thing that I really want to stress when you finish heating these up, and these are still super hot, don't dip these in water, don't quench them. If you quench these uh, tools when they're hot, it will harden the material and, we, and make it brittle, and we don't want that. We want to leave this soft, so let it cool down to just room temperature or ambient temperature at its own pace. Let it sit 15 or 30 minutes, whatever it needs to get cool enough that you can touch it. But as of right now, these things are super hot. Okay, well, waiting for this to cool. Um, my needle nose cooled first because, you know, it's got less metal, so it cools a little bit quicker. I still got these serrations we see on the bottom of here, so I want to clamp this right in the vise. Spread this as much as possible so you can see better. I'll tighten our vise down here. And I'm just going to take, I have a coarse file, 
and a little bit finer of a file. So I'm just going to file away those teeth. And we can hear now, it's not skidding, it's actually cutting and removing metal. So this metal is quite a bit softer than it once was. And careful not to put too much pressure on one side or too much pressure downward here. Try to keep your pressure even. Um, if not, you'll wear away too much in spots. So we're just going to use a good amount of pressure. Try to keep it even. Try to watch where it's removing the most metal. It looks like I'm putting more pressure on this side. So I'll dial it back, put some pressure on the back side. Or we'll just get rid of those serrations real quick like. There we go. Look at how easily that metal's removed. Yeah, yeah, it's coming right off. Long, even stroke for the file seems to be the most effective. Almost, there we are. We're almost gone here. A little bit in the middle. There we go, those serrations are completely gone. Something we wouldn't have been able to do without ruining our file if we look at that. Serrations are completely gone. Let's look at our match up here. Oh yeah, we're matched up. Good, we wanna make sure that we don't have any larger gaps anywhere. So we filed pretty evenly. Now, after you get done filing that off with the course file, take a little bit finer of a file. Just smooth it out. I've already did this top side. We'll just do this bottom side. Any place that looks rough, apply your pressure there. You'll notice you'll have a little bit of a burr along the side, so take the file and just lightly bevel that. That's going to make it a whole lot easier to work with. Get your corners. Feel along it. Feel, does it feel sharp? Does it feel rough? There you go. That feels nice. Dress the other side a little bit. Anywhere it feels rough or sharp, just take that off there because we don't want to scratch reeds when we work with them. So no sharp, no scratchy surfaces. Well, that's that's beautifully mated together. See how it grips are. Oh yeah, that's so much nicer and no scratchy serrations. Well, that'll be, that'll be nice. Okay, now our pliers have cooled enough that I can handle them. We've annealed this part. Now this can either be done on a vise with a file or we can do it on our bench grinder. Let's see how it responds to the file. Before the file, we could hear it just skating across. So let's see if we can bite into there. Yep, that's taking them right off. So we're just gonna keep a good thing going. Keep even pressure, don't rock back and forth. Stop every now and again, see where you're applying the most pressure to, see where you need to apply pressure, and just keep a file. Oh yeah, we're almost down there. Oh, we're almost smooth, look at that. That's looking nice. Got some metal shavings in it, which I'll be cleaning out. Let's get after this other side here. Get a good picture there. There we go. Take my coarser. I think this is this might be a double cut. So I'm applying more pressure here, so I need to remember to keep my pressure back a little ways now. Stop filing every now and again. Look at what you're doing. 
easy to be putting too much pressure in one direction and just taking off at one spot. So we want to take off evenly. So file a little bit, look a little bit. I've got a little bit of serration left right there. The ability to make your own tools is priceless because you can make, once you have, get good at annealing and working plier jaws, you can have them however you want. Look at that, our matchup's pretty good. Yeah, I would say need to remove more at the back of both of these and they'll be good and we'll smooth them up. So we're gonna take a little bit more off the back side so they made up a little bit better. Taking more off here and if and you want, this is a trick from knife sharpening. Um, you can, I want to take more off the back side so you can mark that with a marker and then file that away. So you know that you're, let that ink dry. This is just a Sharpie or permanent marker. And we'll just make sure we're filing on that. So that way you can tell where you're actually filing. We'll do that to the other side because I knew both back sides of my jaws had to come down uh, a hair bit. So I knew I wanted to take off right back here so I can even mark those with the marker and then file that, that marker ink away. There I didn't want to take off a lot, just a little bit. Let's go till my marker's gone. Okay, let's look at the matchup now. Beautiful. Only place that needs to come down now is the center of the jaw. I can see my back and my front is good, but I want to bring, I got a little bit of high area right here. So I'm going to file that area away. Just a little bit light. Let's going to use light pressure. Look at your mark. There we go. Same thing, other side. Let's check our matchup. Oh, that's, that's getting good. I got a little hump in the center of this one. I can actually see it. I'm high right here. Just a little bit of wobble. My file. Okay. That, that mark right off there. Take that high area off. That marker trick is a good trick. Now we're going to take our, our single cut file or a little bit finer file. And we'll just smooth these jaws up a little bit. Just a little bit. We'll give it a smooth, nice smooth surface. We'll. Sure there's no, around the edges I don't want, I want to bevel it. I don't want any sharpness, no scratchiness. No scratching. Get them corners worked down too. Just a little, little bit. There we go, beautiful. Oh, it even feels nice and, nice and real flat. Flip it over. Give it a little bit of work with the fine file. You can actually kind of see if you stop every once in a while, you can see the area that looks smooth. Beautiful. Then I'm going to bevel these corners here because it feels sharp. I don't want that sharp areas of metal will scratch your weed. You don't want that. Be nice. This is gonna be nice. Well, those are nice. Now let's go ahead and let's see if we can't take these out right here. Because one thing I like in my heart making pliers is for this serrated area in the center that's recessed to be smooth so you can work with things more easily without marring them. So we're gonna take these right off here because this should be annealed as well. Okay, this is a, a round file. And these are just cheap, my yellow handled or my cheap files. Then I've got some good Nicholson handled or good Nicholson American files, um, which are what I prefer. But for like rough metal removal, just a cheap bargain bin file is fine. Careful not to jump up onto 
our area we just smooth. So you could always you could always do this one first. So this one's a little bit rougher. And I like to turn the file every once in a while. So your files wear more evenly. Turn it every now and again. You're wearing a dust mask, something to protect your nose, protect your lungs from the metal shape. Turn my file. Even though this is a cheap file, I want it still to wear evenly. So. We're getting wore down there pretty good. I want to go till it's totally flat. And we don't want to use too much pressure when we're filing. Just a good medium amount of pressure. If we use too much pressure, it will begin to... A file from the side looks like it has a whole bunch of blades in it, little teeth. And if you use too much pressure, it flattens the teeth. Because we're, we're not abrading the metal so much as we're actually cutting the metal off. Turn. Turn. Look pretty even. We're almost there. Got a little high spot right here. Oh, that is ow. Ooh, that's hot from the filing. Let's go ahead and let's, let's get a tiny round file. Got a little bargain bin half round file. Oh man, that is hot. I'm just gonna dress. This is a lot finer of file. I'm just gonna dress the inside of these corners. We're gonna smooth it up a little bit. No sharp edges when we're working with harps. Feel around. Does it feel good? I would say so. There we go. Look at that. Teeth are gone on this side. We can flip it over. Well, we'll just go ahead and make a long video. Who cares? You're going to see me file it. Got my file card here. Short, uh, this is a Nicholson file card. Short um, bristles one side, plastic the other. Every once in a while, clean the teeth on your file. And we're going to keep going with this. As you touch it, you'll notice it's getting hot. We're, we're creating a lot of friction here. There's something about doing things by hand that just makes it, gives you more of a feeling of accomplishment. And not everybody out there has rotary tools, so files are oftentimes more accessible for people. If your hand gets tired, just give your hand a little shake. Let's dress the sides of that. Just smooth that a little bit. Finer file. We'll get the sides as well. Sides matter. The sides are where the burr occurs, and that's where your scratchiness happens. Just bevel it nicely. Same with this other side here. You'll do yourself a world of good just by feeling around what needs work, what doesn't. Any of the transitions from one angle to another, I try to hit those. Give them a little bit of a bevel because when you're working with harps, especially if there's a lot of polish or it's very, very smooth, um, any scratch you make will show up. So. Polish your transition points. This is a much nicer one. Dress that right there. Maybe. <laughs> Almost. All these. Feels, that feels really pleasing. I don't feel anywhere where it's hanging up on my fingers. Yeah. Okay, that's exactly 
what I want. We have two tools we did here today. We took a six inch pair of farmer pliers. These are Crescent CTs and a second hand pair of needle nose. Turned them both into smooth jaws. This is gonna help when you're bending triggers or adjusting triggers. You can grip the trigger right there at the knee bend. You can manipulate it with your thumb. You could always, if you're making a, a bend, you can always set this up in front of a torch, make your bend. These smooth jawed pliers are awesome. Here next week, we're going to be doing the same thing. This is a six inch pair of pliers. We're gonna be doing the same thing with an eight inch pair of farmer pliers. We're gonna be annealing it, we're gonna be smoothing it, and we're also going to be filing out so we can grab square or diamond shape stock. These are really invaluable when you're working with harps. Now, after you've annealed these, you can file whatever shape you want into here, whether it be diamond or square shaped, round, square, it's not gonna matter, but I really, really think this is a valuable skill and kneeling tools to make whatever tool you want because with just pliers you buy, you can you can go to a hardware store, you can go to a thrift shop, you can go to an antique store, you can take any pair of pliers and make them however you see fit. So now we've annealed our own set of pliers so we can set them up for smooth jaw or set them up for filing out for custom shapes. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other jaw harp request videos, be sure to comment below and I'll see if I can get around to making that video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more harpery. Keep your harps clean, keep them dry, keep them oiled. And most of all, when you're in the shop, wear eye protection, wear hearing protection, wear respiratory protection. You only have one body, so be sure you take care of it. I love y'all. Harp out. Thank <laughs> you.